Today, we're going to be talking about somebody who has shown an extraordinary level of courage, not only on the battlefield, but after the battlefield. In fact, some of the most difficult battles he's had has been with the very government that he gave his life to. We're going to share with you a lot of what's happening in this world, look toward the election, but get some insights into why you need to be involved in what's happening in this world. Because if it can happen to him, it absolutely can happen to you. My guest is General Michael Flynn, 33 years in the United States military, one of the most highly decorated soldiers, was selected to be Donald Trump's national security advisor, but then was targeted by our own FBI and Department of Justice, who was afraid of him because he's kind of like Donald Trump. He doesn't just go along to get promoted, go along to get along. He actually loves this country and he believes in integrity and doing what he says he'll do when he took an oath to the Constitution. General Michael Flynn joins me now. General, it's great to see you again and thank you for joining us here on Huckabee today. Uh, so I, I am so honored to be with you and your guests today, your, your, uh, your, your audience. What a wonderful audience. And, and I had a great time with you uh, up in Nashville not too long ago. So thank you very much for, uh, for everything. Well, it was a joy to have you on the weekend show. And after that, I said, we've got to get you on The Daily Show to continue the conversation. I, I want to begin with the election because we're going to get into some things that I saw in the extraordinary yeah. documentary that I hope people will get. And we'll talk about that. But we're facing an election that would bring a very different, not just person, but a very different agenda to the White House, depending on if it's Donald Trump or Kamala Harris, from a perspective of national security and the military. Tell me what you see as the big difference between Donald Trump's election or the election of Kamala Harris. Well, you know, I put it into one word, and that's that's you know leadership. Um, you know, and then to phrase it out a little bit: extraordinary leadership and proven leadership in the case of of uh, President Donald J. Trump in the time that he spent already as as a president of the United States. I, I think the. The one thing, uh, Mike, that I have told people, the greatest national security threat to the United States of America is not a overseas enemy uh, anywhere, or it's not even in the, on the domestic landscape. We have serious, serious challenges, and we can talk about all those. The greatest national security threat that we have in the United States of America today is the lack of trust between the American citizens and the government that is supposed to serve those citizens. People just do not, they no longer trust these institutions of power. And it's because of, you know, something that you talked about and you saw in my film, this weaponization effect by, uh, by you know, the, the White House in some cases, by uh, the Department of Justice, by, you know, our most senior law enforcement organization, the FBI. It's certainly by elements of the intelligence community, the U.S. intelligence community and and within that, you know, the, the Department of Homeland Security. So that weaponization and this constant pressure of, of persecution on, uh, on people like me, people like Donald Trump, who, who we tried, to, we tried to, to carry that weight on our shoulders ourselves. But what has happened is it's, or, it's affected our, all, already down into the roots of America and the grassroots of America, and people now across our country feel it. That's the greatest threat that we have. Now, you know, jumping into the, the rest of the world, and you know this, uh, Governor, you, I mean, in the Middle East, this is a terrible, terrible situation. You know, we can get into all the hostages and all the kinds of things that are going on tactically, but we also have in, the, in Eastern Europe, Russia, about a week and a half ago, they changed their nuclear weapons policy. That's a that's a big big deal, you know. And I'm not sure if it's breaking news on your show. I, I I'm, I'm certain that you know of it, but you know that that's a big deal when a nation state like Russia changes its nuclear policy. And frankly, we don't know what that adjustment is. Is it first use? You know, it, I mean. So these are the kinds of of uh, of issues that are in play right now. That the next president of the United States, and I pray that it's Donald J. Trump. That's my thing. I mean, I think that he's the one that's proven. He's got the right leadership. He has maintained a, uh, and I know this, I know this specifically about him because I've talked to him about it. When we first met, 
through the certainly the 2016 uh, campaign and then even into the White House. That man loves deeply the United States of America. And we are facing, we are facing elements inside of our, of our own government who are, many of them are anti-American. And I, I can't say that any, any stronger. I mean, when, when I say people inside of our government are anti-American, I mean that. And, and you have people that are of the socialist mindset or of the communist mindset, whatever the, whatever the ist or the ism is, right? Whatever that belief system is, it is definitely not pro-America. And so I want people to understand that we need leadership in the White House that is going to return the trust of the American people back to the institutions that are supposed to be providing us a level of safety and security for us. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at. You know, the economy is uncertain. You never know whether your money's worth as much today as it was yesterday. It's one of the reasons I buy gold from American Hartford Gold. American Hartford Gold has earned a five-star rating and an A-plus from the Better Business Bureau. Be sure to tell them Mike Huckabee sent you. They'll give you up to $15,000 of free silver on your first qualifying order. Call 844-417-1010 or text Mike to 998899. You'll be glad you did business with American Hartford Gold. You know, I think it's important. You said a couple of things that I want to drill down on. One is... Uh, that we don't trust our government. I think that honestly is the situation. I grew up trusting yeah. the government. I grew up thinking that our government was looking after my best interest. I hate to say it, General, I don't believe that anymore. I, I really yeah, believe I that they take on the people that don't go along with them politically, and they target people. I've watched them do it, not just to you, but to Peter Navarro. I've watched them do it to personal friends of mine. And I don't trust the government. I don't trust those alphabet agencies anymore. And yeah. then the point you made is that there's got to be something different in the way that we approach these issues and the people that are going to do it. If people are in their government and they really don't love America and they don't want to put it first, we're in deep trouble. And I think that's, uh, that's the message you're giving us. And it's not from some outsider. You're not just some columnist writing about it. You lived it. 33 years in the yep. military, highly decorated, combat soldier. You come back and you told me this and it shocked me. You said the biggest battle, the most difficult thing you faced was the fight you had against your own government that should have thanked you and rewarded you and instead yep. tried to punish you and destroy you. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and it's sad. It's a sad testimony, Mike, to to where we are as a nation. And, and so... I'm one of these kind of guys that takes responsibility for my actions. You know, and I understand service and I understand sacrifice and all that. And, and for, for this audience, and I think for any audience that I talk to around this country, I want people to understand that we as citizens have to take some responsibility for these problems in our government because, you know, we, we elect people to go into these positions, right? Whether it's at the county seat or whether it's in the White House, we have to take re some responsibility for the for the way our government has taken shape over, frankly, over the last 50 years. And I think that there, there tends to be a complacency or a laziness in the citizenry of those of us in the United States of America, because for, for many years, we all sort of just took for granted that, you know, our government would do these things and that we would elect somebody that we knew in our local town or local, you know, area. And we elected him as a, as a member of Congress or elect him as a governor. And, and we, and we, saw something in them and we said, okay, we trust you to do the job that you're supposed to do. Well, I can tell you folks at the highest levels of our government, we have allowed too many of these people. I'm a big one for term limits as an example. Uh, I do think that we should have that, but that's not an easy, you know, we can't just sprinkle fairy dust and yes. poof, we got term limits. That, that comes with our pressure. So the way that our government has weaponized itself to put pressure on principally conservatives and and, and, uh, and, and, and women who are kneeling outside of Planned Parenthood clinics, right? I mean, to put a, to put a brass tack on something that really bugs me, yes. that, you know, in order for that, us to change that, we have got to take greater responsibility of participating in our government. And I use, I use this phrase, local action can have a national impact or local action equals a national impact. And I mean that. And what I mean by that is that people have to say, look, I'm not going to just take it for granted and let let somebody else run or I'm, I'm not going to maybe I'll vote. Maybe I won't vote. 
No, we have a responsibility if to nobody else, even ourselves, we have a responsibility to the millions of men and women who have sacrificed going all the way back to the Revolutionary War days that gave their lives, as Abraham Lincoln said, gave that last true measure of devotion, you know, in the cause of our nation to, to be able to maintain our freedom. So if people could sacrifice to give their lives up for not only this country, then I think all of us need to look at what's happening between now and the 5th of November. And we have to say, what am I willing to sacrifice? How much more of my time am I willing to sacrifice to get involved, to go, like my wife and I, I got all kinds of things I, I'm doing on a daily basis, Mike, around this country. But my wife and I, we volunteer at the precinct level for, you know, for the voting days, for the early, early voting and, and, uh, and on voting day. We do it because it's, it matters to us because I want to put my, I want to put my, my feet where my mouth is. You know, if I tell people to do something, Sis. I also want to show that I can do it. So if I can do it, you know, everybody else can do it. And we're down there at some little, That's you know, in greatest. this case, a little red tent in a parking lot, right? Yeah, but it's, a, it's the greatest form of leadership. Never ask others to do what you're unwilling to do. General, we got to take a short break here. we got to have a little time to let our sponsors have a word, and it's important. The reason is, is because without them, we don't get to do this show. Now, if you also want to find General Flynn's books, Caps, the movie, DVD, which you absolutely need to get if you haven't already seen it, go to his website, which is simply generalflynn.com. There's also a great sweatshirt that he has on there. It says, fight like a Flynn. Good advice for all of us. Go take a look. 